Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So, just for a point of reference, it's currently December 6th, and it is almost noon. So, Thursday, December 5th, I had to go to Toronto. Um, so, I went down to Toronto on the Wednesday, and I stayed over in a hotel, um, courtesy of the Workplace Safety Insurance Board. And then I went to Toronto Western Hospital for 7 in the morning. Fuck that exists. Um, and I was there till about 2 in the afternoon. So you're going to ask why were you there? Well, thank you for asking why was I there. Why is it important that I was there? I was there for neuropsychological, neuropsychiatric assessment. So, never had one before. Um, but we were joined by Crash the Wonderbird. Here, buddy. Everyone, this is Crash. Crash has his own video uploading currently. Um, you'll get to see the video shortly that Crash says hello. Hey, buddy. Um, and so I had to go for neuropsychological, neuropsychiatric assessment. So the first off, getting up at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, but when you've got brain injury. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning is... For those of you that schedule these things, yeah, please think again. Yeah, 5.30 was not a fun time to try to get up. Um, I then got up, showered, checked out of the hotel, got in the cab, um, and then went to the hospital, uh, got there and they immediately give you, you know, half a metric ton of paperwork to fill out. You know, what's your, how old are you and what medications are you on? And then a bunch of other stuff like medical history. They then give you a... 350 question like personality inventory well by the time i got to that it might have been 7 30 yeah 7 30 in the morning i'm not that switched on i'm sorry it's just it's the case of the matter i'm just not that switched on at 7 30 in the morning and so i fill that out and then they then take me to a computer and i have to repeat some of what i've done on the paperwork side of things and then I do an, a series of other inventories. I'm thinking, why couldn't you just do this all on the computer to begin with? Um, and then filled out those inventories. And this all took a while. I don't know how long exactly. I then had a hour-long a, a, a interview with a occupational therapist followed immediately by a 90-minute interview with a psychologist, followed immediately by another 90-minute interview with a psychiatrist. Then came lunch. <laughs> Which is roughly half an hour. Um, I then <clears throat> came back and waited around a while. Uh, and then got the the occupational therapist came back and I had another hour long interview with her. They gave me a, a report uh, in interim, at least this is their basic like quick little two pager. Uh, a more thorough report will be published in two weeks ish. I'm waiting to get a copy of that. When I get a copy of it, I'll review with you kind of not my results in specific, but kind of some of the benchmarks they were looking for that I can figure out. So why is it important for those of us that have stroke or, or a brain injury that we have uh, these assessments? Well, in my case, it's for work because uh, I'm currently off on another leave of absence. So in my case, it's helped help to determine a potential and successful return to work uh, outcome. For other people, uh, it may be for the purposes of benefits, like you're you're currently waiting for um, special funding for something. So in order to prove you need the thing, uh, be that a service animal, be that um, uh, like a one-on-one -on -one support worker, uh, be that a special vehicle, whatever, you may have to go for some specific assessments. So in the interim, you're going to go for the assessment and they're going to help I don't want to use the word prove, but they're they're going to provide the necessary 
legitimacy on paperwork. And that's not to say that your concerns aren't legitimate. It's just insurance companies and the government and other organizations, they, they kind of want, you know, the alphabet soup with a name. And unfortunately, just the fact that I have have the injury or you have an injury to your brain because of a concussion, because of a traumatic injury, an acquired brain injury, a stroke, you know, whatever the case may be, however you got to the situation you're in, even though I can tell you exactly my experience, they don't typically just listen to us. So you need the alphabet soup, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, I've been waiting six months for this assessment. So this has been a while. It's not kind of like I knew I needed it a month ago. I've been waiting for this assessment for about six months. Maybe, no, maybe five, four, four months. I've been waiting for the assessment for about four months, actually. Uh, actually, no, let, let's, let's back that up. I've actually kind of wanted one of these assessments ever since I had my stroke. Um, but for whatever reason, it never happened. But I've got one now, so perfect. Um, I spent, <clears throat> you know, uh, a fair amount of time there. The only downfall was by the time all of this was done, uh, after five-ish hours, my brain was just on fire. And I had to wait for the bus to come back from Toronto to the city I live in. So by the time I got home, it was 9.30 at night. And my brain was just done. And I'm still kind of foggy today. So if I don't seem as, as switched on or, or as eloquent, I apologize. But Crash has joined us, and he's currently chewing on the... Um, whatever you call that little plastic nubby thing, because he likes cords. Bunch of buddy. Oh, don't want any scratches. Okay, none of that. You can go back to this now. There you go, buddy. So, um, I realize that when you go to these assessments, you're going to have to retell your story to three different people, which is kind of frustrating. Um, I wish they could have done it in a board format. You know, like all three people in the room at the same time and everyone with their questions. Because in some cases, I had to answer the same question three times, which is frustrating. Um, and because my situation is a little bit complex, uh, sometimes it felt like there wasn't enough time with each interview to answer all of the questions. It, it felt, I'll be honest, it felt rushed at times like I felt like I wasn't being given the appropriate like there just wasn't like there wasn't enough time to, to to have the discussion that I felt needed to occur but I'm not a doctor only played one on TV I've never been a neurologist and even on TV so you know I, I have to trust the experts the overall the experience was good don't get me wrong Overall, the experience was great, uh, with the exception of being up at 7 o'clock in the morning and then by 7.30 being knee-deep in personality inventories. <laughs> yes, for my friends out there, I happen to have a personality, so don't... Yeah, I know you people. Yeah, especially you. Um, so, the assessment uh, was worthwhile. I'm not going to say it wasn't. The assessment was difficult because... They ask a lot of questions. Now, luckily, I don't have significant mobility issues, so I didn't have to do any like PT testing, like 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 physio testing. I didn't have to do any occupational testing per se. Um, they just sort of reviewed my occupational therapy and, and physiotherapy history, so that all got reviewed. That being said, um, now I, now now I wait. Maybe by January I get the report. I honestly don't know how long that'll take. So, that was an experience. Don't ever really want to have to do it again. Um, so, the only, the only takeaway I can give to someone that's actually about to attend a neurological assessment, one or a neurofunctional assessment. One, you have to acknowledge the reasoning behind the assessment. 
and it's going to be stressful because they're there to find the gaps. That's exactly what they're there for. They're there to find the gaps. Um, and that's not to say that you haven't been given the appropriate level of service historically. It's they're there to help to find the places where you've fallen between the cracks. They're there to help find the places where you're going to need an accommodation plan. Um, they're there to help to find the subtle, right? They're there to help quantify uh, needs for service or needs for accommodation. So yeah, they're going to put you in slightly stressful situations. They're going to ask you a whole barrage of questions and it's going to be you know a little bit stressful at times. Um, if there's a physiological component, like you've got to go into a physiotherapy lab, they're going to get you to do exercises that are designed to put you in positions um, or situations of, of discomfort and, and off balance or stress. If you have to go to an occupational therapy lab where you have to do things like um, the button board or the, um, the therapy putty or uh, put the screws and nuts together or any of those type of activities. Again, you may have done those historically time and time and time and time again as part of your normal rehab course. But as part of a neurofunctional or neuropsychological assessment, uh, they're there to find the gaps. So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna make you do it three or four times. They're gonna they're gonna make you do it um, different ways. They're they're there to stress you out. So it's it's not uncommon. By the time I was there for five hours, my brain was just on. The best way I can describe it is my, my brain was on fire. Or if you're a fan of Monty Python, my brain hurts. Right. Um, for those of you who aren't a fan of Monty Python, you won't get that reference at all. Um, and that's okay. you know. Um, so, yeah, by the end of five hours, I was spent. Uh, it was everything I could just to get to the, the bus station and then wait for the bus to, to come home. But all in all, it was, it, was a, it was a stressful experience, but it was a good experience. So for those of you that are wondering hey, what's going to happen at my neuro, neuropsychological assessment or my neurofunctionality assessment, many things that are going to be specific to you. Uh, by the time you get to the assessment, the assessors are going to have your entire file because they told me full on that, you know, my file that they received was all well over 200 pages long. And I'm like, holy shitballs. You literally have half a metric fuck ton of paperwork on me. So, um... And here's Crash, again, just for people wondering where he went, he's there. So, you know, they literally had half a metric fuck ton of paper on me. Um, and so they already know a lot about you. So some of the reasons why you wonder, maybe they're not asking all the questions they should, is they've already maybe got some of the answers they need. Um, or some of the answers they already have will provoke other questions. So it is going to be f f frustrating. It is going to be stressful. It, it, it's it's going to be tiring, but ultimately it will be worthwhile. And when I get my report, um, I won't share the specifics of my report with you, but I will share sort of the benchmarks that they were looking for. So you kind of have an idea, uh, but I don't want to prejudice anyone's ability to go in and, and, and fake well or fake poorly. Um, uh, so you can try to pull the wool over on someone's eyes because that's not my intent. So for those of you who've been watching the channel and you've been enjoying it, please like, share, subscribe. For those of you that might know someone that's going through the throes of a post-stroke, post-concussion, brain injury, recovery, please point the channel out to them, get them to like, share, subscribe. For those of you that know someone that's supporting someone <clears throat> going through the throes of a recovery from a stroke, concussion, brain injury, please, again, point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of the content I generate. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below in the comment section. If you want to email me, you can email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Uh, my Twitter description is in the handle uh, description down below. And ultimately, if there's a content you'd like me to cover or something you'd like me to research and do a video on, please get in contact with me. If it's sort of in my wheelhouse, so to speak, I'll happily do a video on it. If it's not, I'll let you know. I don't intend to cover that and why. And if you happen to see someone uh, in your world who you believe is going through the, uh, a stroke, and they appear to be immediately befuddled, confused, have a loss of sense of balance. 
you know, they, they just don't seem to know what's going on at that moment. They have some vision problems. They can't see the one eye. They only see in grayscale. They see a little dot in the world. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. Someone has facial droop, a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context. Um, someone who has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.